Hey there! I was contacted by Chris through the Fountain Pen Network and he had three El Plume pens. He said, I have serious flow issues with them and uh, how about I send you one, you see what you can do and then you can review it as well. And I said, sure. So here we go, the El Plume pen. Uh, this is new old stock, these are no longer made as far as I know. Uh, you can still find them on eBay and stuff and they're actually pretty nice pens. Um, so today we're going to be talking a bit about them, then I'll do a tutorial on how I go about making a pen like this flow a bit better and then uh, I'll do a writing sample. Let's first cover the part of the pen, pass the pen and tell what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then I'll do a writing sample. Um, so first you have the finial of the pen on top of the cap and there's nothing to be seen there. Uh, this is a pretty nice blue finish, they come in a bunch of colors. Here you have the gold uh, gold highlights of the clip, it's not actual gold. Uh, the center band that says El Plume, uh, the clip is pretty tight, feels like something I could bend or snap off, so I'll be a little careful there, um, but has a little ball to slide onto your shirt pocket, works pretty well. The barrel, a gold ring, then a tapered bit, and then a little lip at the end uh, of the barrel there, uh, which is highly reflective as you can see. The cap pops off, it has one of those white plastic inner caps, so be careful you don't break it when you post it, because then the, the purchase may uh, get very low and you actually the cap will fly off when you try to cap the pen. Um, but it does post very securely on the barrel with that lip, uh, which I really, really like. Um, and then you get a nice pen, it's pretty heavy, so you have to like heavy pens if you want to use this one, but I think that's pretty cool. Um, the nib is actually a pretty nice uh, two-tone uh, that doesn't look too bad at all. It says Iridium Point and it has a big cock on it. I don't know why exactly, but it, it's on there. Uh, I'll, I'll show you, should you actually not believe me. Um, but uh, to me that looks like a, like a pretty big cock. Now, um, having said that, uh, the nib was indeed fairly dry. So, when you have something like that, you first check out some, some things. Is the, are the nib and feed aligned properly? For example, uh, is the, let me adjust the focus a bit there, right? Um, is the alignment not something like this? Uh, sorry, I, it doesn't say, but it's something like this, where the nib and feed are not actually centered. Uh, are the nib tines misaligned? In this case, that was not the case, so we'll check that out a bit later. The section is plastic, little gold rim with a lip. Uh, as I said, it's pretty top-heavy when you use it posted, but it's a decent weight. Uh, this pen did not come with a converter, so I just threw in a simple Chinese converter, which you buy on eBay for, I think, $5 for 10 of these things. They fit in a lot of pens. And that's pretty much it. So that's what you get on the pen. Um, what do I like about it? What do I not like about it? Well, it actually feels pretty decently made, fairly robust, um, nice to hold. This material is a little bit rubbery almost in feel, so it feels pretty cool. Uh, the posting so securely is really nice. I really like that feature. The cap will not fly off. Um, the, the clip and the nib are easy to align like this. Some people really care about those things, and that's not bad at all. This is a fine nib, which means it gives a little bit of feedback. That's to be expected, but indeed the feedback was a little bit higher than I think anyone would want. So I worked on that a bit, and I'm going to show you what I did in a second. What do I not like about it? Well, actually, I think it's a pretty cool pen. Uh, there is a little bit of a step down from the barrel, but it's very minor. You don't really feel it. I don't think it's particularly sharp. Um, the one thing I would comment on is that it's beautiful to post, but it really gets top-heavy, uh, into a point where I find it unpleasant to use. I would use this unposted. Also, when you post it so deeply, um, I think you will notice that this bit of the rubbery material can wear down a bit. And, you know, that's a pity. But having said that, I think it's pretty cool. I think we need to take some measurements, then I'll do my tutorial, and then we'll do the writing sample. As to weight, inked up, I have a weight of 50 grams, which is definitely heavy for a pen. When it comes to size, I have a length of 142 millimeters that is capped and uncapped that comes down to 133. 
Section diameter at the narrowest point all the way near the top here is about 10 millimeters, and all the way down right to that lip, it's about 12 millimeters, so not a uh, narrow section. I think we should go on to our tutorial. That's what I'll do next. I hope this was useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, so face in situation, uh, face by a situation like this, uh, you first ink up the pen, um, and of course the, the, the trick there is to use a type of ink that you know has good flow properties, because if you pick an ink that is particularly dry or that doesn't really flow well, uh, then you, you have a problem to start with. So I chose Montblanc Royal Blue, very simple blue, um, but it will definitely get uh, the job done. It's a pretty big uh, nib there, so I had to tilt the bottle a bit. Uh, I'm going to wipe that off a bit. Now what I'm going to do is I will take some paper and we're just going to run a test. Yeah, so what you see here, it's a finish nib. Zippity pop, you see? Um, well, it's fine. And that's the, the thing, probably, that because it's fine, it runs a little dry. So, uh, there are various things you can do if you want to make a nib a little bit wetter. Uh, one thing that you could definitely try is to take, I have my little tool case to the side, uh, is take 0 0.002 of an inch uh, brass shim, um, and that's what I'm going to do here. See if that's an easy solution. I'm just gonna wipe that nib off a bit. In this case, I have established that the nib and feed can be pulled out. It's a very simple f matter of just a friction fit nib and feed. I'm going to clean off the nib a bit. That's why I always like to use a towel or something like this. Um, as an underlay, um, I'm going to take one of these shims. A lot of people ask me where do you get them. Well, you should Google K and S. So the letters K and S Railroading Supplies. They make a little package with uh, four types of shims: 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, and 0 0.05 of an inch. And the 0.02 inch shims are very good for making a nib a little bit wetter. So you see what I'm doing here. I just like to stick in uh, the shim through the breather hole and then just pull it out. Uh, be careful you don't exert too much pressure to either side because then you can get your nib tines misaligned. Um, and actually I should have told you that, let me just grab my loop. Of course I should have told you that you should first check whether nib tine alignment is proper but I have I had already done that and it seemed to be okay in this case it's not perfect but it's good enough I think to not give you a terrible scratch so I'm just running that shim through the nib and I notice that it's getting easier and easier which means that the the nib slit has opened up just a little bit now what I like to do is I like to take a point or a one inch shim and just run that through the nib slit in the same way uh, as I did with a 0.002 inch shim and the reason I like doing that is it will take out some of the debris that the 0.002 inch shim may have left in there okay the feed is still inky which is good I'm going to put the converter in and I'm just going to prime it a little bit so that it writes and then I'm going to draw the ink back up so the feed is really primed. I'm just drying off the nib just to get an idea of how it writes. Now very important in doing this is testing and, and retesting. Um, and when I write now I still see that same dryness and also a bit of feedback. So you can keep running that 0 0.02 thousandth of an, oh, what's that? 0 0.02 inch shim through the 
um, the the gap in the nib, um, or the, the 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 slit in the nib, um, but that can really take a while. Ideally, you would like to end up in a situation where um, the 0.02 inch shim is held in your nib slit. It's very hard to, to put it in from this angle. It's just held in there without falling out, which seems to be the case here. And yet, I think it is a little bit on the dry side. Um, so, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a slightly radical trick to speed up this process of making it wetter a bit. And I'm going to use a Twisby wrench, but you can use any hard surface. I just love this metal because it's so smooth. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cloth, I have a separate video on this, and I guess a bunch of you will already know it, but um, I just put my thumb on the nib like this, I just cover it with a cloth so that I don't get all stained, my fingers. I'm going to put it, put the nib on this metal bit, I'm sorry, I put my fingers here to stop the reflection from my desk light a bit. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to lift, I'm going to show you this from the side, I'm going to lift up the nib a little bit like this, so tilt it forward, and that way I'm exerting some pressure on the nib which opens it up a bit. Don't overdo it, use very little force, check your results, maybe use a bit more force, etc. You can always apply more force, but once you've overdone it, you actually have to reverse the process to uh, really undo it and, and uh, repair your nib. So take it easy, and what you may notice is that your nib is going to bend upwards slightly because of the way you, you, you press it. Um, I'm holding it up to the light now and I see that I have a nice gap between the two tines so I can see light, a beam of light pass, which is a good thing. Now ideally I would like that to extend all the way to the end of the nib, which currently is not the, the case, so I've just done it again. Now one thing you have to be very careful about when you do this, I'm going to take my thinnest uh, shim, is that you remain, you, you make sure you keep good contact between the feed and the nib. So make sure that you don't push it upwards to such an extent that there is a gap and that means that you could take a shim like this or a sheet of paper and just easily push it between the nib and the feed. If you've done that, then uh, instead of there being a nice closure between the feed and the nib, it may look something like this. And that gap that is going to hamper capillary action and as a result your pen will no longer write. It will skip a lot. If you've done that by accident, it really isn't a big deal. What you do is you just turn the pen around, put your thumb on the feed and push down again. So first what you're doing is this, you gently push open the, the uh, nib and then if it's open too much you exert pressure the other way and it's going to close up again. So what I'm going to do now is I'll take some more paper. I have to get a bit of an inflow going because I have, of course, dried it out with the uh, the towel. Um, okay. And now, without pressure, I have a much wetter line. I think you can see the difference. I'm exerting the same amount of pressure. I think you may be able to see the difference in saturation between this line and the line I did earlier. Um, so everything has become a bit wetter, you see? Now the only thing is, you may hear this this has become pretty scratchy. So what I need to do now, I'm going to take my loop, I'm first going to have a look at this myself, I'm going to zoom out a bit, to give you some more, a bit of a view. Yeah, so what I notice is that there is no real misalignment in the tines. So, um, when I hold my nib here, you can see, I'm sorry for the shaky result guys it's pretty hard to do this uh, well that doesn't really seem to be a terrible misalignment although that one tiny tip could be a little bit below the other one 
Um, let me check again. No, I think it's okay. So what I want to do now is, I mean, don't forget it is a fine nib, so it will always give you a bit of feedback. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab my micro mesh. Just going to use the, the finest grit here. Um, you, you can buy, I got this from andersonpens.net, they sell you a nice package for I think 20 or 25 dollars um, and you get nine grades of micro mesh. I'm gonna put my towel out again so that it doesn't move around too much. Um, I should have thought of bringing some water but instead I'm going to just put on a dab of tea. It's not really an issue as long as it's wet. Um, and what I'm going to do is a few figures, I'm sorry for the reflection, I'm going to angle my desk light a little bit different. Uh, okay, I want, to, want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Uh, I'll, I'll tilt the micro mesh just a little bit, but ideally of course leave it flat. What I'm doing is make a few figures, eight on the wet bit. Don't overdo it, this is enough. And then a few infinity signs. and then I want to check my results but one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the nib so that I really polish every side of the nib and again you really don't need to do this a thousand times just a few uh, repetitions can already make a big difference so make sure you test and keep testing your pen um, That already sounds quite a bit smoother than what I had before. It feels smoother, so I'm going to go for one round. And for some reason, I like the number eight. So I do this eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Not a lot of pressure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And one tip, hold the pen under the angle in which you write because that's how you're going to make it touch the paper. Uh, I always like to do a little bit like this with the pen completely vertical. Um, I don't really feel it catch on anything and then a trick that a fountain pen expert told me about is I make sure I got some lubricant all over the pad is I put my finger on the nib and I just run the pen across. You can do it just once. I'm going to show you twice just to give you an idea. And what you do is as you move down the thing, uh, you the pad, you just put your pen in, into a vertical position. So you start almost horizontally, then you go up all the way to a vertical position. And then you have really polished your nib nicely. And then what I have here now is a pen that gives very little feedback and I really like the way it writes. Uh, your mileage may vary, maybe you want it to ha have be a bit smoother, maybe you like some more feedback, then of course you can adjust your technique to that. So there you have it, an El Plume. Um, I hope that you found this little tutorial useful, I hope I haven't bored you to death, and uh, I'll see you later. Bye bye! Of course, I'd almost forgotten that we would have to do a writing sample, this being a review. So here we have that El Plume fountain pen. The nib is fine and uh, it's Steve Meistered. And then maybe a bit of fast writing. It's definitely smooth now. Although there will always be feedback, as I said, it is a fine nib, so you will always have a bit of feedback. That's just the, the way of the nib, so to speak. Um, wetness. I have made it wetter than it was. Line variation. Well, here you can really feel it sort of drag into the paper. But as you can see, the nib actually offers some quite remarkable line variation. I'm just going to 
wipe it off gently because I collected some paper fibers in there. But that's what you can do. Now you can do some reverse writing. I have made it a bit wetter, but even so, it doesn't keep up terribly well with reverse writing. So this is not a nib you really want to turn around. Then again, you typically do that to turn a broader nib into a finer nib. Uh, and this is already quite a fine nib, I would say. So, there you have it, guys. I hope this was useful. And uh, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.